are worthy. You, Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy. You alone are worthy. Our righteousness is as filthy rags, Lord. We are not worthy, but you are worthy. In the midst of our mess, you still try to satisfy our souls by blessing us. So, Father, we're going to bless you right now in return. Out of our meager lips, out of our small, contrite hearts, here's our worship. We're going to try to worship at another level just because we are worshiping you. Despite what our day took us through, despite where we even are in our minds and hearts right now, we're going to push through and give you all the worship you so richly deserve, God. Because we want you to saturate not only this place, we want you to saturate our hearts. We want you to saturate our minds and our, our very intentions, Father, so that we will be one on, on one accord with each other and with you. So, Lord, as little as it is, here's our worship. Hallelujah. May it be a sweet-smelling savor in your nostrils. you for me for all the things you've done for me and no one can worship you for me here's my worship all of my worship Receive my worship, all of my worship. Here's my worship, all of my worship. Receive my worship, all of my worship. For me, for all the, for all the things you've done for me, and no one can worship you for me. Here's my worship, all of my worship. We see my worship.
10,000 tongues, we could not praise you enough, but that doesn't mean we won't try anyway. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, God, for the way maker that you are, God. You always make a way for us in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of the division coming from out of the White House, Father. We thank you that you make a way for us, oh God. Like you made a way for Israel in the desert. Forty years, Father, you made a way for them. When they were chased by Pharaoh and his army and they came upon the Red Sea, you made a way by parting the waters for them, oh God. Thank you, God. So we just thank you because you're still parting the waves for us, oh God. You are still making a way for us, oh God. Hallelujah. Because that is who you are. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we thank you for who you are, for your mighty God, a wonderful counselor, King of kings and Lord of lords. We, we glorify you this day for you're worthy of all praise, all honor and glory, Lord God. You are the I am that I am the beginning and the end of all things, the keeper of our soul, Lord God. Lord, we thank you that we can cast our cares on you, for you care for us, Lord God. Lord, you are mighty, wonderful, excellent, Lord God, Jesus. Lord, I pray, Lord God, today, Lord God, for those that are hurting, those who have lost loved ones, Lord God, Lord God, we ask that you just give them a comfort, Lord God, only a comfort that you can give, Lord God. Take them and wrap them in your arms, Lord God. And love up on them, Lord God, and let them know, Lord God, that you're there. You're there, Lord God. Lord, I pray for those that are on missions, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you will give them the strength that is necessary to reach those that are lost, Lord God, in this COVID area, Lord God. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, for wells that are being planted, Lord God, that that water would be <laughs> mm, that they would have water, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord, I pray that food will get to the locations that they need to get to, Lord God, and those that are on the mission field will get the rest that they need to get, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, I pray for this government, Lord God. Lord God, a government that is so topsy-turvy, Lord God. It says where the wicked is in power, the people are grievous, Lord God. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We glorify you, Lord God. Touch the hearts and the minds, Lord God, of our, our people and cause us to be strong in you, Lord God. And Lord God, that we that we'll just keep moving on and on and on in you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord God. That we can do great exploits, Lord God, in this time, Lord God. Lord God, show us how to reach those that are lost, Lord God. To spread the gospel, Lord God, in the name of Jesus in these trying times, Lord God. Give us a peace, a peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord God. 
give us wisdom, knowledge, and insight, Lord God, to you, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for your wonderful, your holy, your righteous, your loving, Lord God. We praise you. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy, Lord God. And Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that you will just keep us this day. Guide us and strengthen us and fill us with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. We're about to be blessed with a mighty word from a mighty man of God. And we thank the Lord for Elder Tony Jenkins. He has pastored, he has helped pastors, and we thank God that he sent him to help us at Fresh Anointing. For his wonderful family, his wife and his daughter, they're a blessing to us. And we just give God praise for the word because we know we all need a word from the Lord. And, but also on behalf of the worship branch and Pastor C and myself, we just wanted to say a word. We, will all, we say that Chanel will always be a love in our heart. We love her. We continue to love her. We will miss her dearly. And it's a hard place, but I'm glad to know she's in the throne room worshiping. She has direct contact now. And we're the ones that got to press on. She's fine. But please keep her family in prayer. They're still making decisions about the memorial service. We'll let you know about that. But she sowed to the kingdom of God for years and years. And she's reaping an eternal harvest. And we do want you to keep in mind the sowing and serving thing that we're doing now. We do have a box out in the foyer. We're preparing for our Thanksgiving so if you want to drop off canned goods and non-perishable foods and little gifts and small clothing items, uh, please call the office and they'll let you know the hours and the days that you come and can drop them off. We're going to make love baskets and give to those of us who are in need. So we want to be sowers so we can reap a harvest, a harvest that's eternal. So we thank God for Elder Tony Jenkins as he brings a word. Praise God. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of the Most High God. Glory to God. Uh, we give honor to our God, to our Savior, Jesus Christ, to the presence of the Holy Spirit. For truly, the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. We give honor to our dear pastors, the pastors, walkers, and uh, to each and every one of my brothers and sisters here in fresh anointing. I can't begin to tell you how excited I am to be back in God's house. Oh, I, I was telling my wife before I uh, came out this evening, I said, you know, it's been since February since we've been in fresh anointing. And I'm telling you, I'm just so, so excited to be here with the people of God. Uh, we're not going to be before you long, but we do have a word from the Lord. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles, I'm going to go to Matthew, uh, the 15th chapter reading the 21st to the 28th verses. Matthew 15, 21, 28, a very familiar text, but we want to see what God wants to deposit into our spirits at this time. Is that all right? Amen, amen. Matthew 15, 21 to 28, and it reads as thus. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her, Not a word. 
And his disciples came and besought him, saying, send her away, for she cries after us. But Jesus answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshiped Jesus, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Father God, we thank you and we bless your name. We thank you right now, dear God, for allowing us to assemble ourselves here and for those watching, dear God, through the technology. Father, we give you glory in advance, dear Lord, for what you are about to speak into our spirits, dear God. I stay clay. And I pray that you always use these lips of clay, dear God, for your glory. And Lord, we again say thank you right now for what you are about to do. In Jesus' name we say amen and amen. A, a few years ago, I came across something, and I don't know if any of you have heard this before, but, but I want to read it to you. Uh, it says, if God had voicemail in heaven, it would sound something like this. If God had voicemail in heaven, uh, I'm sorry. All of our angels and saints are busy helping other sinners now. However, your prayer is important to us, and we will answer it in the order it was received. Please stay on the line. If you would like to speak to God, press 1. Jesus, press 2. The Holy Spirit, press 3. If you would like to hear King David sing a psalm while you are holding, press 4. To find a loved one who has been assigned to heaven, press 5. Then enter his or her social security number, followed by the pound sign. For reservations in heaven, please enter John 3.16. Now for answers to nagging questions about dinosaurs and the age of the earth and life on other planets and where is Noah's ark, please wait until you get here in heaven. Now, if you are calling after hours and you need urgent assistance, please contact your local pastor. <laughs> if there was voicemail in heaven. As I was reading Matthew 15, again, a familiar text, I, I was reminded that many years ago, a cross-section survey was done which revealed people's three most frustrating experiences. Uh, the first one was people when they are not being acknowledged. The second one is when someone is being disrespected. And the third one was when people have to wait for something. Interestingly enough, we find in Matthew, the 15th chapter, starting at the 21st verse, we find a desperate mother here facing these frustrations. Now, before I go any further, I must let you know that this uh, encounter between the mother and Jesus Christ uh, occurred shortly before the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now that's important to know because often in our lives, our troubles and our triumphs run close together. Let me say that again. Oftentimes in our lives, our troubles and our triumphs run close together. I'll speak to that in a, a little more in a few. But here in Matthew, the 15th chapter, we find a mother dealing with a child who is in trouble. Now, she was a Gentile woman from Canaan. The Bible says that in those days, both her race and the region from which she was from were viewed by Jews as being bad. I got a question for you here today. For, for all the good that you seek to do every day, do you, my brothers and sisters, ever find yourself in a bad place in life? And truth be told, it's, it's never by your own doing or your design. The 
The Bible says that the Jews view Gentiles as being less than, insignificant, not important. And frankly, if we fast forward today, we are living in times where many people who are deceived and have eschewed and prejudiced and racist view of folks, they have this for no legitimate reason. Amen. Uh, uh, but I, I don't want you to be, be deceived, uh, saints of God, because some folks even today would see the church of the living God and God's people as being not important. Uh, but I'm so glad that our God saw the value in us so much so that he gave his only begotten son a ransom for each and every one of us. Amen. And do I dare say that even those who can say that they know us or know of us might not think that we are all that based on maybe our past experiences or our histories. But see, we can rejoice in the truth that in eternity past, God had some thoughts and some plans and a foreordained destiny for each and every one of us. And we're walking in it now. Amen. The Bible says that this desperate woman came crying to Jesus Christ. For her daughter troubled with a demon. Now, I, I, I just want to ask, do any other godly parents here who ever had a child who's been in trouble? <laughs> I mean, can we be real with God and real with ourselves? Can, can I make it more personal? Any of God's children here ever been in trouble? Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, this woman came because her daughter was troubled with a demon. The Bible says that when she came crying to Jesus, the disciples wanted Jesus to do something for this woman because, and I'm going to paraphrase it here, because when she came crying to Jesus, she was embarrassing. She was making a scene, and they didn't like the. Now, now when I studied the text, two things came to my mind here. First and foremost, uh, just like this woman, and uh, let's make it personal here, uh, whenever I find myself uh, in trouble, I mean in a hellacious uh, situation, quite frankly, it is no time for me to be cute, quiet, and have a tempered prayer unto the Lord. And the fact is, and I'm not ashamed or embarrassed to tell you this, that my urgent cries unto the Lord are really ugly. They are really ugly. The second thing I need you to see here, the Bible says that this woman came crying to Jesus, but the disciples wanted Jesus to do something just to get rid of her. Ah, I have a trouble, my brothers and sisters, uh, with people who claim to walk with God but don't have the patience to see somebody else delivered. Somebody else delivered. The Bible says that we are to bear the infirmities of the weak. Amen. And more so, I've read your Bible, and your Bible tells me we should not boast in tomorrow because we don't know where we're going to be, forget the next hour, in the next second. So that's why we need to have patience and show love for one another. Amen? Amen. The Bible says the woman came crying out to Jesus, but Jesus answered not a word. Jesus answered not a word. Now, now, now. I, I want to ask you something. Have, have you ever cried out to the Lord and gotten no response? <laughs> I mean, you cried, and you were going through hell. You cried out to God, and you got no answer from the Lord. The Bible says in verse 24 of Matthew 15 that Jesus finally replied to this woman. He says, I'm sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, watch this. It was not enough that the disciples wanted her to go. They had no time for her. It's not enough that Jesus initially ignored the woman's petition. But now she's being told that she is excluded from what Jesus has for the children of Israel. When, when I read this passage of scripture, saints of God, I thought about current time where we have the immigrants who have been uh, uh, you know, uh, removed and, and moved away and sent away uh -huh, and deported and, and, and separated from their children or the dreamers who have been under attack. Bible says that there's nothing new under the sun. Now you know why we got to keep praying and the church said, oh yes, Lord, Jesus told the woman, it's not meat to take the children's bread and cast it, cast it to dogs. 
Now, my question is, <laughs> oh, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Has God ever given you an answer that didn't sit quite well with you? Uh, let, me, uh, let me use myself. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, he's, he's responded, but it wasn't the answer that I wanted to hear. <laughs> and, and see, that, but it was just in that moment. It was in the moment because I can go back. I remember when I was a novice newborn believer in Jesus Christ. <laughs> and God told, I never, God would tell me after I've worked my 40, 50, 60 hour work week to give so and so some of my hard earned money. I said, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Or, or watch this. I'm, this is me now. This, is, this ain't y'all because y'all love God. This is me. Or he would tell me to help somebody who was, who, who's been a thorn in my flesh for years. God will do that. God will do that. But see, he's always done that. If you don't believe me, ask my brother Peter. Because God has a way of finding out where we are and where we are not in God. The Bible says here that the, the woman, the woman, after hearing what Jesus said, <laughs> you have to give her kudos. You've got to give her a high five. Be because this woman, uh, uh, she stood there. She, 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 she did not snap. She did not crackle. She did not pop. And see, unlike some folks who'd have gotten angry and offended and distraught or even discouraged, watch this now. Her, her response to Jesus was both commendable and appropriate. The Bible says that she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Now, now, when I read that, <laughs> I was reminded, you don't have to go there, but it was in Psalms 37 and 30. It says the mouth of the righteous speak wisdom. The mouth of the righteous speak wisdom. Why do I tell you that? Because this woman replied wisely in her time of trouble, in her time of trouble. First and foremost, she agreed with God. Is anybody here in agreement with what God is allowing to take place in your life right now? Yeah, 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 God is doing something. God is doing something, saints. She agreed with Jesus Christ. Now, now let me remind you, my brothers and sisters, because I, I, I know that, that you love God. And I know, know, I know for a fact that, that you love God and you trust God and you believe God. Uh, can I remind you that's why God smiles over you good people? He smiles over you because you choose to persevere and press on where to give him praise and seek his wisdom, especially during these crazy times. These are really crazy times. We've never seen anything like this before. And let me tell you what I believe about you, my brothers and sisters, when I see you. You're so committed and comforted and convinced of God's word that whatever comes or goes in your life, you know that all those things will work together for your good. And even in this current pandemic, you have the blessed assurance in God's power, his grace, and his peace. That even the devil himself can't understand you folk. He can't understand y'all because you, you walk around. Let me thank you, Holy Spirit. You walk around with the Paul and Silas mindset. I mean, how are you going to be up there in prison, in the prison, in the prison, shackled and you having church and you singing praises unto the Lord? But God has brought you good people to that place in him where you have said, regardless of what comes and goes, we will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in our mouths. Oh, yeah, you choose not to get weary, declaring all ways that God has, God can, and God will deliver. Hallelujah. I, I, I like this, dear mother, because she said, even the crumbs <laughs> that fall from the master's table. Let me tell you something. <laughs> oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I'd rather have a crummy blessing from God than all the devil's loaves. Did I say that right? I'd have a, you know why? Because the old song they taught me in the church, it said, little is much if God is in it. She said, even, even the crumbs are sufficient, O oh God. This loving mother came to Jesus crying, willing to face the rejection and the humiliation and disrespect on behalf of her child. I, I, I told you at the beginning of this that, 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 that this happened just before the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our, our troubles and our triumphs. This meeting happened just before Jesus was crucified, bearing the burdens 
of mankind, facing the rejection and the total humiliation. But the fact is, all loving mothers and fathers and Jesus Christ, what's his name, our Abba Father, all loving mothers and fathers bear the pains of their children. Amen? Yes, they do. Oh, yes. When they hurt, we hurt. And when we hurt, Jesus hurt. How do you know that to be true? Because your Bible says that he is touched by the feelings of our infirmities. The good news is that Jesus' blood never loses its power and the blood always rushes to where our pain is. Amen? The Bible says here that, 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 that Jesus Christ heard this woman. She cried out to him. She cried out to Jesus on behalf of her child. Let me tell you something. Godly parents never leave the face of God until their child has been delivered. Godly parents never leave the face of God until their child has been delivered. Years ago, when I read this text, I was puzzled by something because whenever we read about Jesus' encounters with people, he would often deliver them for example, right on the spot. You remember blind Bartimaeus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and Jesus uh, he gave him his sight. Or, or he, 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 he would send uh, uh, those who made their petition home and healed or delivered their loved one who was home, like the centurion. Or there were times where as he was talking, he would send them away and they got delivered. That's like those 10 lepers. You know those 10 lepers in the Bible. Jesus would do that, but, but, but not here. He, would, he didn't do that here for this desperate woman crying out to him, Jesus Christ. Why? Why? Why didn't Jesus initially respond to this woman? Was it to ensure that he not offend the Jews who he said he came to? Or was it he mindful of any possible rebuke he might face from the disciples that were with him? The Bible says she fell at his feet crying, Lord, help me. And one thing we can all agree on, see, we know that there are times when all we can do is cry out to God. And we also know that God is willing to allow such times to bring glory to himself and to grow us, watch this now, for the next level of blessings. What do you mean, preacher? That's the experience that Joseph had. I mean, you go from being, dear God, watch this now. I mean, his brothers hated him. They sold him into slavery. He was accused of rape, ended up in prison, but he became the prince of Egypt. Won't God do it? Won't God do it? And see, God will allow things to happen in our lives because the steps of the good man are ordered by the Lord. And God, whether you believe it or not, and call the devil a liar because that's what he is, God is doing something in your lives. He's taking you to the next level of where he wants you to be and needs you to be, not only for your blessing, not only for your benefit, but for his glory, because our God is all about getting his glory. Amen? Amen. He's growing us for the next level of blessing. But let's not miss the fact that this woman came to the deliverer she heard about. But here, here in this text, face to face with Jesus himself, she finds herself pleading the more for help. Why? Why? Saints of God, I truly believe that Jesus already knew this mother's heart. He knew and saw her faith from the very beginning. He knew her persistent character would surely break through the momentary test of rejection she would be facing. He knew for her, just like for us, that the trying of our faith will bring glory in the end. See, we must uh, never forget that God's method of providence for us can and will be perplexing at times. We won't understand it in the moment. But they told me, come up in the old church, we'll understand some things by and by. But through it all and in everything that we're facing, the one thing that we can count on and we can be assured of, that God's got us. God's going to keep us. And God will deliver us. What I find more interesting is that when Jesus answered not a word to this mother, her petition to the Lord became more intense. She cried the more. Her steadfastness made me think of David's words there in Psalms 27, 13. It says, I had a fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'd have fainted if I'd believed to see. Unless I had believed to see, I, I had a fainted. And see, that's what it is. 
Thank God for the grace of God, the mercy of God, the power of God. Thank God that he clothes us close to his bosom. Thank God that he is that present help in our troubling times. Thank God that he's with us all the time. Bible says closer to you right now than the hairs on your head. He's with you all the time. God's given us his power so we don't faint. What I like about this Gentile woman here is that she prayed the wisest prayer that men need pray every day. Simple prayer. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Oh, yes, she came to Jesus as a troubled Gentile woman, but she left him a child of the king. And her determination brought deliverance, the Bible says, to her daughter at home who was vexed with a demon. I'm going to close with this. This dear mother, in the theater of my mind, I had to go there. (laughs) In the theater of my mind, I'm watching this. When she initially came to Jesus Christ, she did not see it as Jesus' hand pushing her away she did not see that no no rather she saw the hand of God stretched out to her in her time of trouble and need song says if you hold out deliverance will come deliverance will come saints of God dear Lord we've been delivered and we stay determined to go on we stay determined to keep going We stay determined to not get discouraged. We stay determined uh, to stay focused. We stay determined to go all the way. We stay determined to not turn back. We stay determined to not get weary. We stay determined to not faint, faint not, not to give up and not to quit. Why? Why? Because the deliverer, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, makes us to stay determined. Oh, we're not turning back. We're going to keep going. Some things in life, you just got to keep going. You got to keep pressing. You got to keep walking. You got to keep hoping. You got to keep trusting. You got to keep believing. Watch this now. We learned something this past weekend, too. You got to keep counting. (laughs) If you keep counting, victory will come. And the church said, hallelujah. This woman's determination brought deliverance to her daughter. Determined and delivered. Before I close, I dare not take my seat. For anyone who's here in the sound of my voice, anybody who may be watching through the technology, if you don't know Jesus as a deliverer, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, let's do this. It's a simple prayer. It's a simple prayer. It's a simple prayer. Heavenly Father, dear God, dear God, dear God, dear God, I am a sinner, and I stand here now in the hearing of this word, knowing that you are the deliverer the Messiah. I am a sinner right now, dear God, but I'm coming to you now asking your forgiveness. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, and I welcome you into my life. I believe that you died for my sins and that you rose from the dead. I will trust and follow you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. If anybody has prayed that prayer, believe it. It's not a feeling. It's not a feeling. And you don't have to be convinced or persuaded. You just receive the salvation that the deliverer provides. And I want to pray even for the backslider. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, dear Lord, someone might say, I've walked away, I've run away, but I'm running back to you. I'm coming back, Father. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Forgive me, dear God, for walking away. But God, I surrender to you. I will serve you all the days of my appointed time, this day and forevermore. Thank you, dear God. You did not release me, Lord, but you have redeemed me. And again, I rejoice in you. I receive you back into my life with thanksgiving in my heart to serve you always. In Jesus' name, amen. And then I want to pray over you, good people. Heavenly Father, I thank you right now, dear God, for these thy people, your children, dear God. Lord, we know you to be deliverer, dear God. And you are the one that made us more than conquerors, dear God. And, Lord, you've given us your power, your grace, and your love, your strength, dear God, that we might stand strong, stand firm, and stand on your word, dear God. Father, we have been delivered, and we are determined not to faint, not to fret, and not to get weary. We are going all the way with you, dear Lord, on behalf, dear God, not only ourselves, but our children, spouses, and loved ones. We do it, dear God, in the power of your might. And as the woman came, dear Lord, by faith in the deliverer himself, Jesus Christ. Father, we love you, we lift you up, and we praise you all the day. In Jesus' name we do say, amen.
Congratulations. If you prayed this prayer or would like prayer, give us a call at 215-839-8121. Again, 215-839-8121. God bless you.